and welcome back to your 3ds Max tutorials. In our previous tutorial we finished up with an introduction to creating groups and selection sets and we're going to hone in on that a little bit more throughout this tutorial as well as creating and managing layers. This all becomes more and more important as you deal with a large number of objects within one scene. So I've just made a little head start, I've just gone ahead and created a couple of, uh, couple of basic shapes, three boxes, three spheres and three teapots and a ground plane. And that's as far as I've gone, just to save a little bit of time. So I'm going to zoom in on this viewport here by holding down Alt and pressing W. And that can be done by hovering over any of the viewports, like so. And I've uh, taken the grid out of the, out of the scene by simply pressing G. Okay, so I'm just going to give a quick refresh on grouping. So I'm just going to select these three boxes by holding down Control and clicking on each box. Then I go to Group in our menu bar and Group and give them a name, boxes, okay. So now when we select any object, any of the boxes, they're all selected together as one. And if you wanted to ungroup that, you can simply go back up to your menu, click on group and ungroup, and then they, are, they can be selected again as ind individual objects. Okay, so I'm gonna, Reselect those guys and I'm going to show you a quick, uh, another quick, in, um, quick overview on creating selection sets. So if we click on ABC and because we have each of these groups selected already and we go over here to our parentheses with the little star beside it, it says create new set. We click on that and we will again call these boxes. And automatically the, because the three boxes were selected, they are input into that selection set. Okay, so let's check or select away from the boxes and we're going to go and click on create new set again and this time we will call this set balls and you'll see that there are no balls or not no objects created in the in this set so let's click on each of these uh, balls and then click on the little plus sign it says add selected sets click on that and then you can see that each each of the spheres has been added to that set okay and once more if we um, we can also go here and we can create, oh sorry, we select each of the objects and then we create a new set and we will call this one pots and then because they were selected they are again input into that selection set. So now that's a handy, a handy way now to select each of these individual, uh, each of these groups of objects together as one. So we can click on them and activate them individually or we can we can select the actual set itself and then the, each of the objects are highlighted as one. Okay, so let's move on to creating and managing some layers. And it's a very useful tool. So we'll start off, we see what we have here. We have manage layers. This is your drop down. So each of your layers that you have created will drop down in this menu. There's a little teapot for rendering. You can freeze a layer and you can hide a layer. Okay, so by default, Everything is on, um, on the default layer. Okay, so we'll, we'll, we'll go back over that again in a second. Also, we have create new layer, add selection to current layer, select objects in the current layer, and set current layer to selections layer. Okay, so let's just, we'll go open up our manage, manage layers. We'll drop down and you see every object is in the default layer. So if we go over here to our little stack with the orange star, and we can create a new layer and we can call this one boxes and we can press control and click on each of the boxes by keeping control pressed and drag sorry now drag them all and then in the boxes we've only two I'll just take this one and drop it in so now our three boxes are in in that layer and you can see here we have frozen, renderable, and display as box. I suppose the most useful you, uh, you'll, you'll use is to freeze an object with, within the current layer. So you can see here box two, we click on that, this little, this little red box. We can freeze that, okay? Or we can freeze an entire layer by, che by checking the, the, the little snowflake beside the box's layer. And then if we try to move or select if we selected all of these objects and we move them, I press W to move, and we can see that the boxes remain as they were. 
Okay, so we can unfreeze them. And this little individual guy is also frozen. And we can also hide an entire layer by clicking on the light bulb beside it. And you can see here with the little teapots, that means if we just check on, uh, check on box two again, the little red box. If we click on that teapot, although he's visible within the viewport, if we render this entire scene, so if I hold shift and Q, that's the shortcut to render, you can see that the little red box has been removed from the scene. So if I uncheck that teapot and again hold control and press Q, you can see that the little red box has returned. So you can see uh, layers are a pretty, pretty useful, useful tool, um, especially when you have a large number of objects within a scene. So again, we can go back in. I'm gonna show you actually another uh, one or two ways to, um, to manage and create some layers. So if I press control and check each of these teapots, and up here to our stack with the little orange star or little asterisk beside it, create new layer. And now it's prompting us to name the layer. We will call this one pots. And you can see with this little box checked, move selection to new layer. So each of these uh, teapots uh, will be added to that layer. So again, we go to manage layers and you see pots has been uh, added and then you have your teapots within. And also we can create a layer and uh, we've not we've no objects selected so we'll go back into manage layers create a new layer and we will call this one balls there are no objects within that layer and balls is now active if you see on your toolbar you have each of your layers that you made and if we click on pots that is now the active layer we're going to click on balls that is now our active layer but we have no objects within it so this time now if we press control and select each of our balls and go to the little plus sign in your toolbar and add selection to current layer and now when we go back into manage layers drop down balls and you can see the three spheres have been added to that layer okay so another little tip and um, for dealing with layers i suppose would be if you wanted to remove a layer so the only layer that's in our default plane our default layer at the moment is our plane so we want to take, we want to remove this layer altogether for, for some reason. The balls, balls is now active, active at the moment. So if we wanted to delete that, if we right click on it, you can see that delete is grayed out. So we cannot delete it. Number one, because it's active. And number two, because there are objects within that layer. Because if we try, if we go to delete these objects, so you see we can delete the actual object within the layer display panel. So if we wanted to keep our objects, we'll just press Ctrl and Z there to undo. So first of all, I'm going to make the default layer the active layer. You can, you can notice that the blue stack or the stack of, of layers or uh, planes or pages, whatever you like. Uh, once that's blue, that means that's the active layer. So now we want to take these three. I just I highlighted the top, the top object and press shift and it'll uh, highlight each object to the last one. Take that and drag it and drop it into our default layer. And now we just need to highlight balls, so it's blue, not activate it, just highlight it, right click and delete. Okay, so now that, uh, that layer of balls no longer exists. Okay, so we can, I'm just gonna show you one or two more quick little tips on um, uh, freezing and hiding layers. We've gone through the left display panel. We've gone through um, hiding them in our uh, to our managed layers. We can also um, drop down our layers and we can freeze an object from the little, the little, uh, the second line in and we can hide an object from the, uh, highlighting the little light bulb like so. So again, the light bulb makes it visible and the little snowflake makes it um, frozen. So I'm going to go back in here again one more time and into pots we can also right click and we can uh, hide selection, we can freeze selection and again this does the very same thing as before but it's just a little bit easier to manage from your layers, uh, from your layers tool.
Okay, so we will leave it there for this tutorial and in our next tutorial we will uh, continue on with creating some more complex shapes as well as creating uh, objects from our own geometry. Uh, okay, so thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next tutorial.